You're listening to The More the Merrier on CIUT 89.5 FM. This is Donna G with continued coverage of the Toronto International Film Festival. Joining me right now is Ragnar Bragnason. He's a, the director of Metalhead and his lead actress, Thorbeer Thorgill's daughter, who plays Hera in the film. Welcome to Toronto. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ragnar, I want to start with you. Uh, could you give a synopsis of the film, please? A short synopsis uh, would be, you know, a story of a, a young girl in a, in a kind of a dairy farm in Iceland who, along, along with her family, has to kind of recover from a, from a tragic accident within the family. And she does it with in a usual way of kind of, uh, you know, uh, of starting listening to heavy metal music and playing it and stuff like that. So it's a, I would say the short version would be a young woman uh, dairy farming and heavy metal. Can you tell me about the setting of the film? Did you shoot everything on location? Yes, we shot, I mean, all the exteriors are shot uh, very close to Eyjafjallajökull, which is the glacier we, which had an eruption in a few years back. Uh, then, I mean, along that coast of the eastern coast of Iceland, south, southern part, east, east, south. And, uh, but we shot uh, all the kind of interiors of the home of the family in the studio, we built that set, you know, but yeah, most shot in the location. What was it like shooting outside in the winter? It was, uh, I mean, we didn't, you know, it's, we had to go to the mountains to get, you know, a few days of snow, but then, then it was very warm in Iceland that winter, so we had to kind of fake a lot of things in just CGI in the post-production just because I really wanted to have, you know, snow. But of course it was cold, you know, we, we uh, built kind of this um, mountain cabin, we built that in a, in a freezer. So that was like 25 degrees below zero, you know, so that, that was pretty cold. <laughs> uh, Thorbjörn, what was it like working in that scene at the mountain cabin? <laughs> it was, you know, cold and yeah. also because it's, it's so strange. You're like your brain gets slower in a way when it's so cold and every movement it's, it's gets like very, you know, slower in a way. But it was, you know, I, when I saw it in the film, I was really happy with it because it makes really, you can see it like on the face and, and, and the breath that it's really cold. And it was. <laughs> I don't know what your experience is with the farm, but can you tell me about milking cows? <laughs> yes, I actually went to a farm before we started shooting and got to learn how to do it and was there for a week. So, but then the cam cameras came and when we was shooting, you know, you get kind of stressed and like, oh, I want to do this right. And so we had to take some shots of it. But in the end, I, I think it was pretty good. The story is set in the past. Um, why is that? Uh, I really wanted to go back to kind of more simpler times where, you know, uh, the only thing you could do was basically listen to music before you know, the time before internet, before mobile phones, you know, where, you know, in Iceland, especially, we didn't have, you know, I mean, we didn't have any TV on Thursdays or any TV in summertime. It was just nothing. So you had to kind of, you know, try to kind of, uh, yeah, invent stuff or kind of get some hobbies. And, and mine was when I was growing up, was listening a lot to music on kind of vinyl records and, you know, collecting heavy metal and stuff like this. So... And also, I mean, uh, the history of metal is uh, kind of, it's a it, uh, 70s, 80s, early 90s thing, I would say. You know, that was the, the kind of height of popularity and where, when the big bands were big, you know. Tell me about um, learning how to play the instruments. Did you know how to play uh, the guitar previous to this film, Thorbeer? Uh, well, I knew, you, you know, I could play guitar, like, not as well as you had to do for the film. So I really had to just seek people, you know, out for helping me. And I met some Icelandic bands and I got some, you know, just to get the feel. And then I had teachers teaching me how to, you know, the technical thing of it. Um, but I really, really enjoyed it. And I don't think I will ever stop playing now after learning it. So, so you'll be playing death metal? <laughs> Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it's a, you know, just playing it. It's different 
to listening to it and like you get this feel in your whole body and I I really just enjoyed playing this kind of music and that was a surprise but now I I, I, n- I don't think I will never you know I will like metal I think from now on the song your solo um, song at the end um, I, are you a singer did you have any trepidations about singing on screen no well I'm I'm not a singer but of course in my training you you get to sing as well but um, no, this was a new experience, but it was kind of fun, you know, you're, I'm both acting in a movie and also I get to sing on stage and be like, you know, this persona and uh, like, a, like a rock star. So that was just a plus to, to get to do that. And I was really happy, you know, seeing the film now in Toronto, that I was really happy with the outcome and the scene where she sings in the movie. Icelandic films, uh, with the past economic troubles, it's been very hard to get films made. Can you talk about some of the challenges you had with doing this film? I mean, uh, we had so big uh, setback in the 2010, you know, the the government cut down the funding by like 35% or something. So all of a sudden it was really kind of a struggle for the film industry just to keep going. I mean, a lot of people kind of just moved away to other countries to kind of just to work. So, uh, I mean, this film was kind of, you know, financed after that, kind of in the shadow of that tragedy, you know. So uh, uh, it's hard, but it's it's slowly getting back. And this year is actually very good because they they saw the light, you know. So they kind of you know kind of doubled the funds this year, which is great. But now we have a new government, so I'm kind of a bit, you know. Uh, afraid that they will cut it back down, you know. So it's, I mean, it's always, you know, new politicians, new kind of uh, decisions. But uh, the filmmaking business is flourishing this year, but we're keeping our fingers crossed that we can do something about it next year, you know. Will your film screening at the Toronto International Film Festival um, be a, a bonus for you in terms of getting future funding, do you think? I mean, the good thing with, you know, getting your film into an A-list, a great festival like Toronto, is that it helps with, you know, the distribution of the film. It helps with, you know, other projects you're doing, you know, especially if you get kind of good reviews, which we had already, you know. And and so, yeah, everything helps, you know. And also with kind of just the release in Iceland, we're le- releasing the film in uh, a month's time. And if if you know if we do well you know on festivals and other places the Icelandic audience will kind of yeah we'll need to check that out you know there are two other characters in the film besides uh, your character of Hera can you tell me about working with the actress who played your mother um, first um, yes um, her name is Haltora and it was really early on that I felt like yes this was the right cast and we just connected uh, like you know very good friends in a way so I wasn't afraid at all that when we just came to set I was just like I felt so safe and and I was just you know I was looking forward to to do our scenes and then um, also she was such a good teacher in a way because she's like a very experienced actress and she could really like you know help me and tell me things and so I don't know. I, I I really like just loved her in a way after working with her, and yeah, she's such a talent. And the actor who played your father? Yes, his name is Inkor. He's uh, actually a, a really big actor in Iceland, and he's been in a lot of movies. So just having those two, Inkor and, and Haltura, it you know it made me made me feel safe, and I was I knew I was in good hands. Did you have much of re- a rehearsal period before shooting the film? Yeah, I mean, I got the uh, the lead actors uh, involved very early in the process, just after kind of maybe if the first draft of the script. Then, so for a year or, or two years or something, we I, I, my t- sense of time is awful, but I th- we were maybe two years on and off, kind of meeting up, you know, reading, discussing the parts. They came with their suggestions about you know how to make things better or what to kind of cut out or add and I did rewrites and we it was a it was a close collaboration I usually work very closely with my actors and creating kind of the characters and and I mean the reason is that when the when the actor comes on set he needs to feel that the character is his own that he kind of can you can incorporate it you know in seamlessly into your work you know so I think that 
I was really happy with that in this film that they kind of they gelled very well together from day one. So, so that's kind of the most important thing in the end. Can you talk about the costuming for the film because it plays a very important role? Um, <clears throat> yes, Helga Rose, uh, the the costume designer, she. Uh, she did a lot of research with kind of the whole period of it because it has this kind of duality of on the one hand we have this heavy metal thing you know which is kind of black and leather and the t-shirt and, and all the kind of things go, that go along with it and then on the other hand we have this rural farming community which was in the 80s and 90s had this special feel to it we had like woolen sweaters and, and stuff like this so it was kind of a interesting mix to mix those Things, two things together, and uh, and we really wanted to have everything authentic. So all the kind of T-shirts she's wearing actually are actual T-shirts from the 80s, and we weren't, we weren't kind of faking anything. Everything's real there. So we kind of dug up old kind of you know um, uh, magazines and posters, and everything was kind of we didn't print anything. Everything was from the from the exact period, you know. Thorvir, was it liberating for you wearing those wearing those t-shirts? <laughs> yeah, it. I just like, and Helga also the costume designer. She, you know, let me also be um, have uh, opinions about what to wear, and so we we did this together. And then we just always when we found a good shirt, we were like, yeah, let's wear this one, <laughs> and 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 try to match it with the scene. And so yeah, I, you know, I'm wearing one now, so <laughs> <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Your character goes through a wide range of emotions. Can you tell me how you feel about her? Very early on, I really connected with her. Uh, I'm, I tend to get, you know, also like I, I didn't, I wasn't a metalhead, but I really could connect to do like this, you know, introvert thing, and I'm not wanting to be always, you know, in the spotlight or like well in the spotlight but not wanted to connect all the time and and just be your for yourself and i really connected to that and then when we just started just like from day one and the day two then it just like she came and i really felt like then the emotion that they just came by themselves like when you have the character and you just like oh you feel safe with with her then the emotions just you know it isn't even hard they just they are and it just it, it's here as emotions um religion is also um an important factor in the film. Why did you choose to include that? I mean, that's the kind of the. It, it came from the idea of, of uh, community, basically, because in Iceland we are not a very religious nation. It's um, uh, religion is more of a kind of the church and the kind of that aspect of it is more communal or kind of a community thing. People kind of, especially in the rural parts, everybody takes you know sings in the church choir or every, uh, every other person in Iceland actually is in a choir or so but uh, in Iceland the church is more of a kind of a community thing than a kind of religious thing I would say and also one of the things that kind of you know inspired the story was uh, in 1992 kind of this black metal guys in Norway started burning down wooden churches as kind of a protest to the kind of you know, 1,000 year old kind of uh, uh, conversion for, to Christianity. And uh, that kind of factored into the story I was telling. And uh, so from that, you know, one of the characters appeared, the priest, and so, and the, but in the, in the story, the, the church is kind of the com community part of um, this rural community, you know, and the parents are part of that, you know. How has your experience been at the festival in terms of the audience and the Q&A? Um, yeah, that was really interesting. Uh, I was actually watching the film for the first time uh, with the audience here. So, and afterwards when we had the Q&A, I really felt that this is, uh, you know, it's an audience that goes to cinema. They really had questions, you know, that were interesting. And the take on the movie was very, like, like we were, I was really surprised, just like how many people really connected in the way that I really wanted them to do. So I, I would say I'm just very happy that I got to go here and see it for the first time. And now I feel much more, you know, happy going to Iceland and showing it there as well. Yeah, I mean, the audience here at Toronto are amazing. You know, it's uh, 
And it comes with, I mean, it's a 40-year-old festival, you know, so it's kind of people who are, you know, they know how to watch a film. And uh, you're always kind of a bit nervous when you're screening it for the first time. I mean, we had the world premiere here, so uh, I was watching it with a group of people for the first time. And I was very happy to see that, you know, nobody left after the screening and just sat through the Q&A, which was kind of a positive, and that's kind of a sign that people actually liked it. So I'm, I was really, really happy with that, you know. Do you have any plans to screen this film in um, smaller communities in Iceland? For example, where a character like Hera would grow up? Uh, yes, definitely. We, uh, I mean, it's always a question of kind of uh, technical aspect of it, but we have these uh, digital cinemas kind of in the kind of rural part of it more and more. So I'm actually, we're doing a, uh, in a very small um, uh, village very close to the, where we shot we're going to screen the film there you know and in, invite kind of the farmers everybody that helped uh, helped us and, and also in the west fjords where i grew up kind of the rural part of the up, up north and we're gonna yeah we, i'm gonna tour a bit with the film you know thank you so much for doing this interview thank you thank thanks you. for having us